Good afternoon. How's your quarantine going? I often think that uh, sometimes we live our Christian lives the same way we're living our quarantine lives. We are stuck at home, we're not doing much. We're just kind of waiting for the quarantine to end so we can get back to our normal life. And sometimes I think that's how we live our Christian lives. We just wait until Jesus is going to come again and he's going to take us and bring us to him. I know I'm dating myself here, but uh, Janet Jackson did a song and either the title of the song or one of the lyrics, I don't know which, uh, she says, what have you done for me lately? Sometimes I think that's how we treat God. That's what we're asking him. Just like in the quarantine, we're asking the government to do all sorts of different things. To, we're asking stores to stock their shelves. Uh, I think we ask God the same thing. What have you done for me lately? You know, Peter tells us in 2 Peter 1, verse 3, he says, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us, to his own glory and excellence. Everything that pertains to our physical life, that's what that word life means, our physical life here on this earth. God has given us everything that pertains to our physical life. And not only that, he's given us everything that pertains to our spiritual life. And all of it, every single bit, is found in Jesus, the physical and the spiritual. It's all found through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. We live our here and now. We live our life in the physical, dedicated to him. Ephesians 2 verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. If you want to know the meaning of life, now you can go to Douglas Adams. Uh, I understand that. It's not 42. If you want to know the meaning of life, it's found right there in Ephesians 2 and verse 10. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good good works. That's how we ought to be living our physical life here on this earth, dedicated to him. We're told in Titus both 2 and 14 and 3 and verse 2, or 3 and verse 1, we're supposed to be zealous for good works. We're supposed to be ready for good works. Paul tells the church at Rome in Romans 12, starting in verse 1, that we're supposed to be living sacrifice. Now, to an Israelite, a sacrifice is something that you took to the temple and you spilled its blood. It was dead by the time you were done. It had been cut up, and, and depending on the sacrifice, uh, it might some of it might have been given to the priesthood for their dinner. So a living sacrifice, those are like two words that are totally opposite. So what does that mean for us? Well, we're not dead. We're living, right? So a living sacrifice is one that has died to themselves. We have died to ourself, and now we're only living for Jesus. Paul says it really well in Galatians 2 and verse 20. He says, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Yes, it was really, really hard not to sing that. While we are waiting for Jesus to return, we live for him. And that means working and serving in the kingdom. That means putting aside what it is that we want and what it is that we desire for what it is that God wants and what it is that God desires. We need to ask ourselves these questions. What can we do 
to advance the kingdom of God? What can we do to tell others about the kingdom of God? A quote by John F. Kennedy. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Well, my fellow brethren, ask not what God can do for you. Ask what you can do for God. May God bless you and keep you.